We're into fuel efficiency of diesel truck engines. We're offering uh, manifolds and turbochargers and the ECM programming. We also make a wiring harness add-on. The main thing that Diesel Freak focuses on is trying to help make the owner-operator more profitable by burning less fuel. How about you, Limke Truck, and you got your ears on there? Yeah, come on back. Hey, well, uh, thanks for letting me catch up with you here on the big road. Uh, you're cruising just a little bit north of Orlando proper here, and down south a little bit. Tell me uh, where you come from and where you headed to. I come from uh, Wisconsin, it's where I live. I go to Miami, Florida, uh, do LTL. LTL freight is uh, less than a truckload, multiple drops. Yeah, I got uh, shredded cheese on. I uh, came out of Wisconsin, going to Miami. Also, two pallets of butter for Dunkin' Donuts. Friday, start picking up my ethnic produce, a lot of imported Chinese, Japanese, Indian vegetables. Probably do anywhere from nine to 12 pickups, and start heading north. Go to St. Louis, Missouri, start delivering my freight. A lot of uh, mom and pop places, grocery stores, some restaurants, end up in Chicago. And go home, see the family, and do it all over again uh, on a week. 10-4, you said you're down here every other week, all right? Yep, every other week. So uh, tell me what you're running there. Uh, it's a 2000 Peterbilt 379. Currently has uh, 1,782,000 miles on it. It's powered by a C-16 Cat, uh, 600 horse. Uh, a couple things done to it. Upgrades uh, make it a little bit more powerful. Uh, backed up by 18-speed transmission, and wheelbase is 312 inches, 336 rear ends, custom visor, mirror brackets, flush mounted deck plate, custom fenders, 1998 Great Dane refrigerated trailer with 11.6 spread axle, and uh, 2009 refrigeration unit. 10-4, she sounds pretty good, sounds uh, like she's done you well. Thanks for letting me stop along with you there. It's kind of cool to see uh, see your truck up close. That's a clean looking truck you got there. It looks like you're running some big iron there. Come on. Oh yeah, the big iron boys. Just a group of guys back home that like trucks and uh, appreciate them and drive them and work them every day. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, uh, Big Iron Boys. Search that. Many pictures of anything that we consider to be big iron. And how'd you get in the truck in? Well, it goes way back to being a kid. Uh, my dad drove locally in Wisconsin and I'll feed to the dairy farmers uh, protein and minerals to feed their cattle. And uh, I got out of high school and uh, started doing that. And uh, my back couldn't take the physical labor. I ended up uh, having back surgery when I was 20 years old and uh, needed to do something. So I bought a truck. Uh, it was not this one. Uh, this is my third truck I've owned. And I uh, went on tour. I uh, started pulling a dry van. My girlfriend for 16 years, she rode with me, drove. Uh, we just kind of went out here and had fun. Did more than what one guy could do, but not quite what a team does. Once I got it in my blood, it's kind of hard to get it out. I uh, then bought a reefer unit and started hauling refrigerated. And I ran the East Coast for uh, seven years. New York City, New Jersey, Boston. 
to Texas for two years all the way to the bottom. Did a little bit of California, a little bit of the West Coast, Seattle, Portland. This truck here and this trailer has been all 48 states and every major interstate in the country. No Canada, no Mexico. State in the Continental 48. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the hard work you've put into uh, bringing the things that America needs around. That's that's a good deal. What do you do when you're not on the road? I uh, come out here for seven days and work hard, and I go home and I stay home for seven days and hang out with the family and spend quality time with them. I have a son, Cashton. He's uh, two and a half years old, and a daughter, Delaney. She's five and a half years old. Hard to be a truck driver, but it's harder to be a trucker's family and trucker's life. So they need me when I get home. Cashton and Delaney, I found you working hard. I miss you. Can't wait to get home Monday to hang out. And I'm sure a lot of guys uh, would love to be able to do what you do uh, to get out on the road, make some money, and come back and hang with the family. If I upgraded equipment and bought new stuff, I probably wouldn't be able to do it because I'd have a payment over my head. I just uh, like the old truck and just keep on working it. And rebuild it, repaint it, fix it up, and that allows me to work as hard as I want to, not as hard as I have to. So you're looking pretty lit up there. Uh, some people call them chicken lights, some people call them clearance lights. What do you call them and how many you got there? Come on. Oh, I lost count a while ago. I do call them chicken lights. I'm well over 100 on the trailer, and I think I got like 67 on the truck. 10 4, she's looking pretty good there. Appreciate it. If you can communicate or say something to a motorist, what would you want the motorist to know about your job? Uh, the dedication and hard work. A lot of people overlook. Uh, we're all out here to make a living, beat America. Just want them not to take for granted what we do and realize that you know, if it wasn't for us out here, America would starve. That's in for on that. Yeah, respect and courtesy and uh, kind of break that down for me. What would you want someone to know safety-wise? Uh, safety-wise, I mean, blind spots, don't, don't ride alongside a guy, you know, make sure you're in plain sight. We're out here putting in long hours, you know. We are people and we drive machines, and people screw up and machines break. Realize we're not in a car, we're not in a Prius, we can't stop on a dime. It's dangerous out here and nobody needs to get hurt. If, if they can give respect and courtesy, I think there'd be a lot less accidents and, uh, a lot less road rage. <laughs>